Hi everyone, um, this is a quick update on what's been going on with my Bedini. SSG motor, blah blah. Right. I don't know if you can see on the top, there's now six coils going around for new magnets. Um, you'll see the bottom rotor there, which also has four magnets, which is driving around these coils. Then link to that on the top in here is four more spinning magnets. I'll show you. See? The blur of orange is actually a cross with four neo magnets and it spinning in there. And they spin around these six coils, which are linked to this three phase rectifier, which go back into negative side and positive side, and they go back into the gaps over there. All right. So that's that. Um, and these are ideas I've borrowed, if you like, or taken from the Daft Man setup. And like me, seems to be a bit of a northerner, so full of brilliant ideas, naturally. Seems like a bit of a genius, knows what he's on about, has a really high quality, high, real high quality build going on. It always seems to really. I even watched his videos about doing this, which is going to be my new circuit, using nails and tacks like he did to uh, to build together a nice bedini. I'm going to put my pot on these two and some coil points on there. Be nice. Run out of uh, solder to finish soldering it, but you get the idea. Really good ideas coming from the Daft Man. You know, I can do anything with that. At the minute I've got all of my circuit really messily put here. And eventually it'll be on this nice board. So I can just fit that to the current board I've got. Take the pot out of this silly orange stand there to make for it and it'll stand up nicely on here, so that's what I've done. Taken some nice ideas from other people and used them nicely. I have noticed that since I've been feeding back um, all the juice from the three caps back here, one, two, three, which take charge from this coil, this coil, and one side of that bifiler, still haven't rigged up the other yet, and then push it into here if you can see. Uh, that's my negative connection on the primary battery, and there's my positive, but it just routes through my meter so I can always see how many amps it's using. And you'll see the two black wires on the top, that's where I'm dumping back. And I'll just do this to show you, let me disconnect it. Wait a couple of seconds. Get a little spark. I'll do it again. Because you can get some really big ones once it builds up. And I hope you can hear, but the motor slowly begins to speed up. You will, if you can hear the frequency, because the mic's on the desk. See, it's starting to uh, speed up quite quickly. Like that. Right, and because the build quality on mine is quite low, uh, the extra vibration from that speed just sent me into some crazy uh, tapping. Because it's on, it's del very delicately resting on each top of the coils each of the four coils. I need to come up with a more permanent solution for that which I may do this evening but at the same time um, the bottom part isn't perfectly centered. You can see it moves up and down in the slightest way. Um, the CDs bend and stuff are not perfectly strong. Uh, it gets worse on the top um, and they're not quite steady either, they move, it moves from side to side ever so slightly. Meaning that it was more difficult to find the centre point to attach the four extra magnets needed for the, the three phase six coil generator there. I've also got to say that the Daft Man's version of this is loads better. A lot better, twelve coils ha housed in a really really nice um, wooden housing. So that's much better than mine which is just duct tape down a bit and put into place but what I was thinking is you, 
if you wanted to do something really fancy, like if you've seen KT Service Corp's um, version of this, then you'll see if this was flipped on its side by 90 degrees, so it spanned the same way as his. Um, on the side of his, he could have, on either side, to be honest, on both sides of his um, spinning armature, he could uh, have put these six coils here, as well as the flat version that he has, the generator there. So he could have either done both separately or extended all of these coils, run 12 like the Daft Man, but then also bend them and spread them down to come around here so that they end up L shaped, if you like. So that the six magnets underneath and the four in the middle both generate fields and it will catch it on an L shape so the, the hoops came down one side down here flattened off went around the CD came back up again like that you know that'd be uh, easy to make when you've got the ability to cut and form a lot of you know wood and other materials not so easy when you're just botching it like I am so there's some really nice ideas to make some really funky generators to put on these types of machines, these types of motors. But when you, uh, my next one, I'm not going to build to face this way. Instead of sitting it up on an axis like that, it's going to rotate on this kind of axle and spin this way around, so that then I can build a setup like what I just mentioned. Turn it round and mount it onto either side, and therefore you get two times whatever you get off that. So it just seems like a logical step to me. And I, oh, by the way, yeah, spinning at this speed I'm currently using, oh, it's difficult to show you, 347 milliamps. Oh, just knocked it off. Spin itself back up. Yeah, 300 and something milliamps, 300 and. It's jumping all over the place. But only th it's in the 300 milliamp range. Oh, I think I can show you. Dun, 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 dun. 381 there, because it's sped back up again. I'll refine the spot. But you've seen through my previous videos how much it tends to consume. I think it's because of the instability that it's slowing down, etc., etc., etc. However, what I was going to say was feeding back into the primary battery like I am doing really seems to increase the runtime. So I've got a much longer life out of the uh, primary battery as a result of feeding that back in. At the minute, I'll give you some voltages. My primary battery is at uh, 12.47 volts, my secondary is at 12.38 volts and in each of these, because they're in parallel, so in the cap bank is 13.12 volts so I've got 13.12 volts feeding back into and it's under load, so that's what they do under load, they'll charge up way past 13 volts otherwise so there's 13 feed, feeding into a 12.47 bat volt battery. So it's currently at is 13.12 volts. So that you'll imagine, as you can imagine, that definitely increases the runtime. So as well as feeding back into a secondary battery, it seems that the unique way that the caps extract and the DC, we can just force straight back into another battery. It seems to increase runtime. I'd say it was significant. But it's fair to say that every minor increase or successful adaption you make to one of these machines, you will see a significant increase. And this is definitely a significant increase in runtime. So that's me out. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.